So recently, the finals updated to season three, and there are a lot of balanced questions, concerns that I have. Let's start with the light specializations. Cloaking device, that specialization needs to be gone immediately. Not only do I hate playing against cloaking device, I feel like as a player using cloaking device, it's very confusing. Even, even if you stand still, enemies can still see you. Using the cloaking device, I feel like I don't really know exactly how visible I am and how much the enemy can see me. And when cloaking device is used on me, I really hate that they get the first shot on me and I can't even really see them, especially when I feel like there's a significant difference between high settings and low settings when you're looking at a cloaking device player. And not only that, evasive dash and grappling hook, those have clear counterplays. You just aim where they're going. While a cloaking device, you can't see them. How are you supposed to aim where they are? There's an obvious disconnect between these specializations, and I feel like cloaking device is the odd one out and should be removed like come on bro especially in terminal attack where you if you get the first hit as most cloaking device do because the enemy can't see them like how is that fair especially in a mode where you can't regen health really the only counters to cloaking device are thermal vision motion sensor sonar grenade it sort of feels like everyone has to run these things to counter specifically cloaking device like thermal vision i feel like that's especially for cloaking device players you can see cloaking device play people with it, but that is the only reason people are using it. No one is using smoke grenades to use thermal vision. And I feel like thermal vision should be removed too, because like, I don't think it does much. It's not a multi-purpose gadget. It's only for one specific thing all right and now let, let's talk about the lh1 for the light last season you had throwing knives that were super op at the end of the season and then okay patch season three you nerfed throwing knives but guess what you buffed lh1 twice have you not learned your lesson you buffed throwing knives three times and then you nerf it and then of course you buff lh1 twice and then you nerf it by 20 rpm when it was at 300 from 280 to th from 300 to 280 lh1 is busted now bro have you not learned your lesson stop double buffing weapons couldn't you have wait to buff the lh1 next patch to see how things are like what are you making what what statistics are we making up bro lh1 is so busted now it does more damage less visual recoil it is better than the sniper right now you are used if you played in the same position as a sniper and use the LH1, the LH1 is beating the sniper in long range. Like, how is this fair? Breaching charges. Why is this still on light class? You have thermal bore now. Like, why would anyone not use thermal bore over breaching charges? You can say breaching charge has a bigger explosion, but like thermal bore is literally a better breaching charge. You can shoot it from range. But, but, like, no one's gonna want to come up to the site with as a light and just throw a breaching charge on route. Switch breaching charge to medium, and then medium will actually have a more utility focused set. Sonar grenade. So why why are we buffing sonar grenade? So why are we buffing sonar grenade? Like, not only that, you didn't even you didn't even buff it correctly. Like the animation for the sonar grenade, make it match with the radius at least. What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? Is it the balancing system was a ranking system, bro? Embark, you were literally bronze. Let, let's fix this, okay? Are we just trying to bring recon senses back from season one? Can we lower the range of the sonar grenade, please? Okay, medium specializations. Dematerializer. This this thing needs to be more consistent. I don't understand how how last season you guys did not make a single change to dematerializer. If you play dematerializer on Las Vegas, you'll see so many issues. One-way dematerializers where you can see out of the dematerializer, but the, the other side cannot see through. Like, that's a clear issue that needs to be addressed. I need to be able to depend on dematerializer, so I need to use it. Make sure the hole is big enough for me to go through where I'm aiming. And I need to be able to go through that hole. Like, come on. These are simple things. Like, make the hole bigger. Or make it so that it dematerializes more layers behind whatever you de dematerialize it. Like, I need to be able to depend on dematerializer to be act to actually feel good when I'm using it. And not only that, I feel like having the dematerializer distort vision through the dematerializer is not a very good thing to have. I feel like that's very annoying. That's like pulling control from the player and just leaving it up to luck or randomness. Can we please fix these issues? Please? Please? All right, healing beam. Let's just put healing beam in terminal attack, but remove the the beam part. I'm fine with healing being in the game, but when it's so strong, where like a person that is especially bad at the game, if they can just use the healing beam and become and they become like a stim pack for another teammate, 
I feel like there's an issue there. Like, either nerf the amount of ammo a healing beam can use before burning out, or change healing beam to a healing gun or something with a specific number of charges that regenerate over time, which would actually make it like a skill weapon to use because you have to aim it at your teammates rather than just holding left click near your teammates. I still don't see how this is how this hasn't been addressed yet. And Guardian Turret, I feel like, I mean, I guess you could keep it in the game, but I feel like it is, I mean, you place it down and then I guess... The cool part is that you get to know when the enemy is taking damage from your turret. Um, I don't know. I just don't feel like people are enjoying playing against turret. I don't feel like people will enjoy playing turret as much because, like, it's... Really, the only thing you're doing is positioning the turret. And I feel like that is not that fun. Let's talk about all the mines on medium. Gas mine, I think, is fine. You can use it in very creative ways. Explosive mine, I feel like it's... Even though I hate to say it, like, even though I use mines, I feel like mines aren't a very fun way to play the game place it down and you just kind of forget about it i mean depending on how you use the gas mine at least uh but the explosive mine i feel like you just place it down and forget about it uh not that fun uh i don't think it's fun to, to die to a mine either you just make one mistake and you just immediately die glitch trap i think that what they did with glitch trap is pretty awesome it's both a like restricts enemies abilities and stuff and also lets you know where the enemies are because you know exactly where your glitch trap is but yeah I, I feel like a lot of these things just need a rework to make it more fun for both the player and the enemy like it's getting a little crazy just like seeing a bunch of mines everywhere all right let's talk about heavy now heavy was super op and cash out and i think it still is op and cash out but internal attack heavy is probably the least played build in the whole entire game mode because you're slow uh you get hit a bunch and not only that you just nerfed their two main weapons, uh, Lewis gun and M60. You lower the damage by like two or three for both of them. Like, what, what, what are we doing? Why can't we just make the guns feel better and do do what you want them to do? Like, if you want Lewis gun to be less effective at range, just lower, to, make the fall off more or something. Or change M60 so that, like, you just lower both the, de you, you just keep changing the recoils and stuff like that. Why? So, I, I mean, like, all the weapons now for heavy are just super close to range, it feels like. M60 now feels better than the Lewis gun. And I I just made a video talking about why I use the Lewis gun over the M60. And now I gotta tell my viewers, I like the M60 better now, bro. That's how bad you changed the Lewis gun. You lowered the damage from you lowered the damage to 25 to, to 22. That's what the M60 was last season. And you moved the M60 to like 22 to 19. What are we doing? The Lewis gun feels like poo-poo now. The recoil feels uncontrollable. None of the weapons feel great on heavy now. It feels like I kind of have to use winch claw to, e to even like have a chance as doing damage as a heavy now, which is fine, I guess. I think the weapon changes aren't too bad, but now like nobody can do really well as heavy. And I find it crazy that you're you're changing the these guns on heavy, but you haven't changed the gadgets. RPG is still doing 140 every time everyone, someone uses it. Like, what are we doing? Like, people have been complaining about RPG since season one. Come on, guys. All right, but seriously, I think a good way to fix RPG, if if you're watching Embark, um, make it so that it goes through one wall or person. So, like, if you shoot it at the ceiling of a roof or you shoot at the roof, it goes through that roof and explodes on the next impact of whatever. I think that would be pretty interesting. That way people can't just like shoot at an enemy and just instantly do 140. They would have to like actually like aim it. And say the RPG actually hits an enemy direct on it, wouldn't it wouldn't explode on the enemy. But if you aimed it straight down and it goes to the enemy and it hits the ground, it'll explode. So then in that way if it promotes that it promotes uh, I don't know aiming good you can still use it to damage enemies like close range but like i feel like that's such a more creative way used to use rpg rather than just like using it and instantly doing 140 damage no matter what like with a, the radius damage it does too like come on not only that you can use it in combination with barricade like i like it when gadgets can mesh well with other gadgets like if you use them in combination like you place barricade use rpg through the barricade easy money so let's talk about Winch Claw. Uh, here, okay, Mesh Shield. What does Mesh Shield do? Block damage. Enables your team to push up slowly without taking damage. What does Goo Gun do? Block up sights, block up entries, stop movement, create movement for yourself. And then we have Charge and Slam. Like, why is Charge and Slam doing 100 damage every time you push them? Like, all these gadgets are enabling the enabling you to do something. They're not doing all the work for you. And then we have Charge and Slam that's doing 400 damage in one charge like what are we doing like i understand like the idea of a giant charge and slam is like you can break stuff that's fine make it break stuff but don't make it such so op that it's literally just 
charge any anyone and they die we, we need to lower the damage on charge and slam make sure it keeps breaking stuff and pushing people but like do not make it a one shot what uh, do not make it a one shot specialization and winch claw winch claw is very creative i like it but i hate how people can't really escape it like i hate that when a person gets hooked they can't do anything they're stunned for like i don't know a second or something and then it just feels like they just lose like, you get hooked, you lose. And not only that, it goes through Mesh Shield and Dome Shield. So what's the counter? No play style to play against it. If you're within 17 meters, you're, you're, you're done zoned. I would recommend, like, lowering the range even more to, like, 10 meters or something. Make it more of a utility thing, but not, like, a person killer thing. Like, I don't know. It just feels like it gives the other person such a disadvantage for such an easy or such an easy skill shot. And not only that, it feels very random on how the claw works. Like, there are times where the claw obviously misses... But then it grabs the person anyways, like a half a second la later. Like, what are we doing? Thanks for attending my rank, guys. Uh, I've just been a little frustrated with how the balancing team is working at Embark or the finals. I just cannot see how this isn't a problem for them. Or like, like are they even working on these issues? And I would really appreciate it like, if they gave more explanation to why they are buffing certain things and nerfing certain things. Like... These are just things that I feel like are very easy to fix if they are actually seeing the issues. And hopefully this video appears in their brain or something. That's it for me. I'll see y'all. Uh, like, comment, subscribe.